Gary, playing again tonight, how important are these matches ultimately leading into the World Cup? What are you trying to get from them? Um, look, they're important because we're playing very, very good opposition in England. Um, I think it sort of gives us a little bit of a benchmark of where we stand at the moment. But um, ultimately, it's, yeah, it's another international game and they're always important. We try and we just pride ourselves on doing well in every game we go into. This might be a strange question to ask you, mate, but I mean, in terms of one day cricket, in terms of 50 over cricket as we head to a World Cup, is there such huge tactical variations that like you hold back things in a series like this, you have stuff up your sleeve that you'll only use at the World Cup? Am I imagining that or is it just you go out and play every game? I think you just go out and play, really. I mean, what what we're holding back is there's three or four players that aren't here that, that will go to India. Um, look, yeah. It, it's hard because you're trying to manage a squad as well of 15 or 16 players. We're trying to make sure that all our players are, are ready for the World Cup so we've got multiple selection opportunities up our sleeve. And um, But ultimately, you do go out there and try and win every game of cricket that you play. So that, that's that been a real focus for us over here is we, we want to play good, hard, competitive cricket. And England is certainly a team that, that you know they, they're right up there with the best in the world. I know you've asked, you've answered a lot of questions about the World Cup squad. I've got a couple for you, if you don't mind, though. Just talk us through Please. Finn Allen again. I'm going to read you a headline in the New Zealand media today. Uh, Dropping Black Caps opener shows serious leadership from coach Gary Stead. So you get a pat on the back for that. Talk us through how difficult that decision was for you. Uh, I think whenever you leave a, a player out, it's difficult. I mean, Finn, Finn and Will were both competing for that opening spot. Um, and, yeah, it, it's always tough because the players have dreams as well and, and you know that because you help set them with them around what their dreams are. Um, so that's always tough. But ultimately, um, my role is also to, to make some tough calls at times. And this this was one that was really tough because you could there could be an argument to go the other way. But we just felt Will Young had, I guess, the temperament we were really looking for at, at the World Cup. Have, what have you said to Finn Allen? I mean, he's a fantastic young player. He's got you know so much to offer and things, but it's just whether or not he can kind of temper, I suppose, his excitement at times at the crease. I mean, how, how do you how do you, how do how does he break through that barrier? Look, I, I think what we have to remember is Finn Allen is still a young cricketer in terms of his maturity and um, and still learning the game. Uh, he, he's had two or three years in the IPL, albeit he's on the sideline, but he's still learning a lot from those opportunities. For me, I think the most important things for Finn is to get out there and play matches. And I think in the longer version of the game, so in, in one day and four day cricket, it's really about learning a, a, around tempo for him and, and how he plays the game. So um, we've had some good chats around that. Um, he's obviously disappointed, as, as everyone is, that's missed out. When it came to Trent Bolt, it was a no-brainer for you, was it? I mean, as soon as he declared that he wanted to be available, he was in the team? Yeah, we've had ongoing conversations with Trent for, well, the last year around this and we sort of um, set some I put, put some I guess things in place that, that we were clear around expectations on both sides and, and so it's not just about what Trent wants but what we need from him as well and he's, he is a true professional though he certainly looks after himself really well and it was it was great to see him back and the impact that he made immediately on the first game that he was back with three wickets in his first three overs was just incredible. Gary, when it comes to picking and choosing when you play for your country, though, I mean, you're of the same generation as me, and I mean, it, it kind of sticks in the core a bit, but I understand the pragmatic nature of it, and if I'm asked, if I'm in your position, I'm picking him every day of the week because he adds so much to the team. Is that a balancing act for you at all, or is it really straightforward? No, it's definitely a balancing act because um, I think the hard thing is you, you sort of weighing up not only the Trent's desire to play, but also what other people think as well. And, and others are going and on different tours for New Zealand and getting opportunities. So what I have to weigh up essentially is is what Trent Bolt is as a cricketer. Is it still more than what the next person is as well? And um, at the moment, we think he's still one of the best in the world. And, and we're delighted that he's in our changing room here. Hypothetically, what would happen if you've got three or four players like this who have uh, foregone their New Zealand contracts and you're sitting in, and it almost gets to a stage where it, it's it's a, major, a majority of the team? I mean, do you think you fear that that might happen with New Zealand cricket? Um, to be honest, Martin, I'm not sure. I, I think the world of cricket has changed a lot in the last year or so and, and I think there will be more opportunities for players to consider these franchise leagues. But I think what's important for us is um, as a smaller country and, and one that perhaps can't compete from a 
financial side of things with, with the Englands, the Australians, the Indians, for example, I think it's important we're, we're nimble, agile and, and able to move relatively quickly and, and not get too fixed on, on one way of doing things. And that's the challenge, I think, is uh, over the next year or so, is you could see more people walk away. You actually might see some people come back as well. And, and that's the challenge for us as a group, is to make sure that we have an environment here that people want to come back to and, and, and really see the value of, of the makeship that we have within the team. And Black Caps cricket coach Gary Stead is with us, third of the four internationals against England tonight. We always thank you so much for your time, mate. And then I'm reading about the Bangladesh tour, and I know that we're going to take a reduced squad or what's been called a B team over there, and now they're saying that they're going to do the same. What's the value in that then? <laughs> well, look, I, I don't know. what I can't control what they do. We, we mapped it out uh, sort of six months ago around how we saw this this period of time, because it's not just the World Cup we go to. We then go back to Bangladesh for a test series immediately after as well. So trying to get the balance right um, for each of our players and, and, and still have them, I think, mentally fresh and physically fresh when we really want them to will be important, and, and that is part of the balancing act going forward. Whose idea was it to uh, get the team named and do it with, with the family, the friends, the girlfriends, the kids, all of that kind of stuff? Because it was such a great right. idea. Yours, brilliant. Oh, brilliant idea. Thank yeah, you, Gary. Absolutely brilliant, Martin. <laughs> I love the uh, I love the families and stuff being involved with with that as well. And and you see the different generations. Um, it wasn't certainly wasn't my idea. I imagine it's the the media team here who who go about doing that. Um, but but very very special for the guys and I think for the family members as well. Yeah, and the fans as well, mate. I mean, because ultimately, you know, we've all got families. I mean, that's the whole thing. And you kind of forget, you know, we yell and scream about our sports stars, but ultimately they are people. They're human. I mean, they're just like us, and that's the beautiful beautiful thing of that. Let's turn our attention to the World Cup then. Okay, <clears throat> are all wounds healed from 2019? Do we need to keep talking about that and reminding you about that? <laughs> um. Look, I mean, I think for us, we've moved on. It's it's tough, I know, because uh, being over here in England, it gets played every second every second day we go to a ground. It seems the 2019 World Cup's on again, and so I, I guess for some players, it still might have some some wounds there that get open from time to time. But I think as a group, we we now move on to the next tournament, and and first of all, it's completing the next two games here in England, and it's been a really competitive series, which has been fantastic for us. Then. Bangladesh then the World Cup so for us it's not not looking too far ahead and certainly not looking too far back as well all we can do is control what's in front of us and make sure we're adapting to the conditions which will be in India I think will be some very very different conditions that we might face. You're going to get asked this question every day between now and then Kane Williamson how is he tracking is he going to play that opener? Um, Don't know yet Uh, we've still got about three weeks or so but um, Kane had a had a bat in the nets today. We're having a having a bit of a chat afterwards. He looks fantastic at the moment. He he's still not moving at a hundred percent, but he's certainly tracking in the right direction for us. So we can't can't say yet if he'll be available for the first game, but I'm pretty hopeful that if it's not the first, it'll be soon after that. And finally, who do you look at in terms of the most dangerous teams that are there? We were talking about this yesterday. Obviously, the host Pakistan. You're talking, you know, you're thinking Australia, England. Us. I mean, are those the five teams you think that the best five teams going to be at this tournament? I think the teams you've named, I think you can put South Africa in there as well. Um, I think even in Asian conditions that Sri Lanka have that ability to, to upset. And I guess that's the beauty of going to a World Cup is, is you have a month or so, you play everyone else, every other team. Um, you have to get on a bit of a roll at times and, and, and probably have a little bit of luck go your way from time to time as well. But... Um, Certainly in that last World Cup that we were in, we had a we had a draw where we won the first five in a row. We got a couple of, I guess, big big um, net run rate gains in our favour, and and we, we certainly built on that from a from a World Cup point of view. But it's it's always exciting to go to these events. I mean, for the players, but also for the staff that go there, I, I, it's something I think you look back and years to come and say that was pretty cool to be part of. Yeah, I remember that Indian rained out game, the point from that ended up being pretty valuable. And, and then we go back to 2015 at you know, South Africa at Eden Park. We got a good rain delay there. So you're right about the luck. Mm, yeah, and, and, and I think over a tournament of 10 or 12 games that you play, there'll, there'll be little key moments that'll stand out when you look back and think, oh yeah, that was really influential. So we just have to make sure we recognise them at the time and, 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 and do everything we can to be on the right side of that, that small result.
Please forgive us back in New Zealand here. We're a bit distracted by the Warriors this weekend as well as the All Blacks playing a matter of a World Cup. The Black Caps are right there, mate, but we've got two in front of us before that happens. Yeah, and, and look, I mean, it's always great to watch the New Zealand teams as well. And, and we we sat after the game at Cardiff the other day in the dressing room and watched the All, Black, All Blacks play. So those sort of memories are, are also things that you you um, yeah you, you cherish, I think, at, at the end of your careers, those, those times in the dressing room together and supporting other teams. But we're certainly behind the All Blacks, behind the Warriors and, and all the other New Zealand teams that are out there competing.